What's going on YouTube? It's James Prigioni coming to you live from Jersey. The Bradford pear, we took that out. That's no more. And it opened up a lot of light in the new food forest. I want to show you guys what that looks like. The seeds, they're sprouting. The new heating mat, how's it working out? I'm going to bring you guys along. Let's go. It's kind of funny because I mentioned it in a previous video, how in New Jersey, during March, we go from like one day where it feels like winter to the next day it feels like spring. So just the other day we got blanketed with snow. It was like a nor'eastern. You guys might have gotten hit also. And now today though, it's like spring, it's beautiful. It's so sunny, everything's melting. And just the other day we took the tree down. Let me show you. This was the Bradford pear that I talked about in my previous videos showing how it was blocking too much light in the, in the new food forest. Not anymore, look at that thing. That massive thing is down. Let me give you a better angle. Yeah, this was a good sized tree. I'm happy I took it down though. It's a landscape tree, not a productive tree. Maybe for the birds, but we've got these giant mulberries, two of them. So that's plenty of food for the birds there. And even for our chickens, they're out today because it's so nice. Even though it doesn't look nice, it is a nice day out, especially when the sun comes out from the clouds. But I'm gonna t I took down that tree, but look how many trees I'm gonna replace it with. I'm gonna do the same thing as that old food forest you see there on this new one on the left. So you take down one tree, you plant, you know, 30 or 40. I know some of you were worried in the comments that we were gonna ruin the fence, but it dropped just perfectly. We're happy with the way it came down. And by cutting this tree down ourselves, we saved a good amount of money. I wanna give you a scope of the size. This thing was massive. And as you can see, I really, I really got my work cut out for me. But like I mentioned, cutting this down ourselves with that one cut that we made, that basically saved, uh, I don't know, maybe five, $600 or something. And what that I'm, I'm gonna do with that is just invest that into the food forest, invest that into trees, into all perennials, even annuals, anything to get myself growing. As you can see, I only did that one cut so far. I haven't taken the rest of the tree down. I'm not sure how much of that branch I wanna take out because it's a little bit of privacy and stuff. And I still need to cut this down lower at the base but it's good for now so I can get the trees in and I don't have to drop this on any of the trees and things I have in the ground already. And the eastern red cedar behind me, I may take this one down myself too, I'm not sure. It's all dependent on, I guess, how high I can get a rope up there so I can get some leverage and pull it. Cause like this tree, we attach the rope over to the um, mulberry tree and then attach that to a come along and then just use the come along to click it and tighten it, tighten it as we cut. This way we know it would fall in a direction that we wanted it. The girls are happy it's nice out today, all hanging out together, doing some digging. I say it many times, but you can see why I don't let them in the food forest. Look how much they scratch everything up and mix everything up. That's what we do not want. We don't want to be mixing the wood chips with the dirt. That's how you get the nitrogen tie up. That's how you get the acidity. That's where all your issues come from. Do not mix. We're only layering, just like nature, layering. Tuck's gotta get a shot in there too. Right, Tucky? He's a good guy. He's got his own little door. Got for the greenhouse, he sneaks in and out there. I like to have it there for him so he can go in and out, but also it lets that cool air in. Up next, I wanna bring you into the greenhouse, show you how the heating pad did, and if I wanna change anything. Let's go in. I have to be careful walking through that doorway with the camera in my hand, cause I don't have gutters up here yet, and all that snow melting, it's all just dripping right down, right in front of the doorway, which isn't a good thing. I have some gutters saved up, cause I recently replaced the gutters on my house, so I've got some extra gutter saved up I'm gonna put along in the front. And then I'll just have all that water run down into the food forest, I think it'll work well. I'm sure you're wondering how the heat mat worked out. And I'd say it's a success, but it could definitely be a lot better. I got some ideas from you guys. I'm gonna implement them and make a few changes. First, I'm gonna step back outside and show you the seeds that I planted the other day. The ones that I had on the heating mat that I have in right now. The seeds seem to be doing well. I'm gonna flip the camera around and show you guys. But before I do, one of you mentioned in the comments, you said, James, brassicas really don't need that warm of temperatures in order to sprout. And you're absolutely right, they don't. But the reason I was working on the heating mat and stuff is more for getting that area ready for when I have to plant my tomatoes, my peppers, because they do like warmer temperatures to sprout. And the brassicas, when I'm sprouting them in there, with that heating mat, I can allow for a more consistent temperature and have like a more even sprouting. Here are the seeds that I planted the other day, starting to come up. We've got eight trees, 12 cups in each tray. So 96 plants, just starting to pop. That's why I've got them in full sun now. I have them outside. Try to keep them nice and short and tight. Uh, we don't want any leggy plants. And you can see just a little bit, some of them are 
a little yellow, and the reason for that is I didn't get them out into the light quick enough, so I had them in a kind of a dark area for a few hours too long, maybe six to 12 hours too long, but they'll green up, especially from today, getting this nice light. All these plants here, I started in just one day, just to give you guys an idea of the potential of how much food you can really grow. Even if you wanted to sell some of these small starts, $2 a piece or something, there's a lot of potential. You can get packs of seed for pretty cheap, especially brassicas, they come with so many in them. Uh, let me take you guys back into the greenhouse though, because I want to show you what I'm going to be doing with the heating mat. So here's the current heating mat. I call it a heating mat, but it's really just a heated coil that I'm kind of turning into a heated mat. Some of you mentioned that what I had set up here that I can do a lot better than this. Some of you mentioned that by putting the heated coil on the ground, even with the sand like that, that the ground is probably absorbing and taking in a lot of that heat and I'm, I'm losing it. The ground's basically stealing a lot of that heat instead of allowing me to put it all throughout into the greenhouse. So instead of that, I'm gonna try to put it up onto a second shelf here. By doing that, I want all that heat to kind of radiate into the greenhouse more. This way, that heated coil will also work as a kind of heater for the whole greenhouse at night. One thing I try to pride myself on is always being open to learn. I mentioned it in a Facebook post recently about how it's dangerous to want to always be the teacher and never be the student. I try to approach everything with a student mindset. The comments you guys give me, I read all those. I take them all to heart and I learn a lot from them because you guys are my teacher, really. Everyone is your teacher. You can learn things not to do from people just as much as things to do. So on these vlog style videos that I bring you guys along for, these aren't how to's. I don't know everything and exactly what I'm doing, but I'm doing it. I'm taking the steps and that's one of the reasons I'm sharing these because I want these videos to first off give you some good ideas to also inspire you, to encourage you, and to show you that anyone can do this. You can do this. This isn't rocket science. And you'll see, I'm no genius. I'm nothing special. But I'm going to get a lot of food out of here by taking the right steps and doing this stuff. And you guys know, there's no possible way that you can reap if you don't sow. I'm going to take some of these 2x6s, some of these 2x4s, move them to the shelf below. This is where I'm going to have my new heated mat set up. This way it can radiate the heat down a little bit and it's a little cooler down here than it is up here. So here's the idea. I picked up these totes, I think they'll work well. And I'm gonna drill a hole in the side, fill that baby up with sand, and then I could run the coral into it like that. I picked up two of them, if it works well, then I could run two of them right next to each other. And it fits really well with two trays. Let me just grab two trays, show you how it's gonna work, give you guys an idea. So that tray will be like that, this one like that. Fit two trays nicely in there. That's 24 plants, and then I've got this lid. And it'll fit nicely, this way I can keep the humidity high, take it off when I want to. I think it'll work out nicely. There are a number of reasons I think this system is gonna work a lot better. One of them is the lid. This way I can keep the humidity high. When I'm in the greenhouse and it starts to get warm, I open the door and I open the window, which bring all that cool air in, but it also drops the humidity down. With this lid and this little system, I can have my own kind of separate environment for starting my seeds. At first I was indecisive whether or not I wanted to drill a hole in the lid or in the tote itself. I decided I'm just gonna drill in the tote because if I drill in the lid, every time I lift the lid, I'm gonna get an issue with that. I'm going to use a hole saw for this. It's made up of two parts, or three parts, I guess. Let's unscrew this back here and then slide this piece right down. And in time, this one reminds the other apart. But first, this isn't gonna be, isn't gonna drill through it. I need to pre-drill a hole. I'll pre-drill just with this one here. And again, I want it relatively high, as high as I can. What I really don't want is this to crack, so I need to be careful. That looks like it should be good, and no cracking. We'll just feed the wire right through that. And it looks like it's high enough that I won't have an issue with the sand. Okay, I got holes drilled in both sides. This way I can run the wire in one way and run out the other way. Let me get the sand in now. I'm not gonna use the whole bag. Okay, let me get this wire on. I think the easiest thing to do is just gonna push this cord through here and then run it up the top. One of my issues, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with, is right here of this rim, 
it's gonna be touching that heated wire, so I need to put something there. I'm thinking maybe some kind of tape. What do you guys think? So that silver duct tape, not the duct tape, but you know, duct taping, that really silver tape. Maybe I'll use that, but something that's fireproof. I don't want it melting the side of this. What would you have? That's the basic gist of how it's gonna go. Let me just get some of these trays in and see if our height is okay. Here's one of the trays that I already have sprouted, but I just wanna put it in and make sure the height is good. And it looks like it's pretty perfect. Just like that. I'll be able to fit two trays in. Maybe I'll put just a little bit more sand in because there's that gap in the cup where the seeds have room to sprout up. If they do sprout, if I get here a little late. And I also wanna keep this as much sand as I can because it'll work as more of a thermal mass. Is there you can see I got a decent amount of sand in there. I think it'll work out nicely. And again, that sand is gonna work as a thermal mass. That'll make it so the temperature doesn't fluctuate too quickly either. This one's all finished and I'm happy with the way it came out. 24 seeds though at once, that's just not enough. I got another tote, so we're gonna be doing 48 seeds at once. I have enough wire. And again, I have to kind of observe this to see how hot it's gonna get in there, see how much the wire is gonna heat it up, whether or not I have to add a little more sand, take some sand out, or I can even use maybe less wire in there and run three of these or four of these. But again, I'm gonna have to just step back and observe and let that guide me. Right there, that heated coil, I don't want that touching the plastic. That's where I'm gonna to have to put some tape or something. Right now, it's just not touching it because it's firm enough to stay. I'm gonna unplug it though until I can put some tape in, just to be safe, I don't want that plastic melting or anything. That's today's video guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, share it with your friends. Check us out on Facebook, on Steemit, and as you guys can see, I got my work cut out for me. Literally, and I guess pun intended. See you in the next one. <laughs>